Hello and good morning everyone. So now today we will be moving forward to uh, page 147 where we are discussed about this leptospira. Now we will discuss about this important topic of syphilis. Syphilis is present all over the world. It is one of the sexually transmitted diseases that is found all over the world and this is the burden of all over the world in every country including United States of America. So since it is a sexually transmitted disease, it will transmit it by a bug, by a bacteria that is a spiral insect. We are talking about the spirochetes. So they are a spiral insect bacteria that trans get transmitted through sexual contact. And they will lead to a different symptoms, different stages of the disease leading to different symptoms that you can encounter. So talking about the syphilis, syphilis is caused by spirochete, Trypanoma pallidium. We have talked about this spirochete organism where we have discussed about the Borrelia, we have discussed about the Leptospira. Now we are discussing the important and third one that is the Trypanoma pallidium. Treatment is penicillin. The penicillin G which is uh, actually we can even give long acting penicillin like benzadine penicillin depending on the stage of the uh, syphilis. But you have to understand syphilis is a disease caused by a bug known as the Trypanoma pallidium. It is a spiral shaped bacteria. Okay, you have seen this. This is the spiral cell bacteria and this how can we demonstrate? The demonstration of the organism can be done in a two form. From a microbiological point, if you are to diagnose the disease, there will be a in which stage the disease is. If it is in the primary stage, there are different stages of the disease, I will come to there. If it is in the primary stage, so there will be the structure, there will be the lesion like this sanker. Sanker is a painless also in your genitalia, maybe a male, maybe female. Mean male, we see uh, male on the penis, there will be the painless genetic ulcer that may you not be noticed. So, from there, you can excuse and collect the fluid, and then you can see under the dark field microscopic. You can even do, do this fluorescence antibody test in fluorescent microscope, you can observe this organism, or you can direct to the PCR. This is the direct demonstration of the organism. Always direct demonstration like PCR or say microscopy, dark field or uh, fluorescence microscopy, this is the strong evidence, this is the 100% evidence. There can be another way by which we can diagnose and these are the called serological tests. These were the microscopic, that is a dark field or say you can say uh, fluorescence or your PCR, this was a direct dem demonstration of their bacteria in <clears throat> inside the microscope or say by PCR molecular technique. We can even go by the indirect way by testing your blood sample and in which in plasma in serum we can detect the antibodies. Okay. Talking about this, there are the two types of tests. One is the treponomal test, one is non-treponomal test. Non-treponomal non test is called there's a non-specific test. They are not actually targeting the bacteria. They are from the byproduct. When the bacteria enters inside your body, there is release of this, there will be the inflammation, there will be the damage of the cells, there are all the other things that happens in your cell. And this that measurement is the measurement, is the indirect evidence of the measure of your, measurement of your trepanopalidium or say syphilis bacteria. So that test includes VDRL, RPR, even new techniques has been named, but you have to remember this VDRL and RPR. So these are the indirect evidence. They are not related to the diagnosis of the bacteria. They are indirect evidence. If you want to know about the bacterial specific that is called treponomal antibody, uh, they can, we can do TPHA, TPI, FTABS. These are the diagnostic tests for confirmation. Okay. So one more important thing is that when a patient get infected, with syphilis, the patient will develop this VDRL positive. If the person has no syphilis, the VDR will be not be positive, RPR will be not be positive. If a person get infected with a syphilis and get cured, then VDRL will be come down because this is just an inflammatory byproduct product. If it is in, uh, ongoing inflammation inside your body, if there is active disease, the VDR will be positive. If there is byproduct will be there, or otherwise it will be not there. The interesting point is that even after cure, that specific test like TPHA or TPHA will be positive lifelong that you have to understand. So once a patient is cured also, the non-specific test will be actually negative, but a specific test that of the bacteria that is TPHA, trypanoma pallidium, hemagglutinin A, that will be positive for lifelong that you have to understand. Okay, so a specific test actually against the trypanoma will be present for lifelong, non-specific test is if positive, it means active disease. If negative, then it means that you have been improved or you have been treated. If 
TP say the VDRL is or RPR is negative, then you have to understand that you don't have the disease. Okay. If non-specific test is positive like VDRL and, and uh, RPR, but TPS or TPI is not positive, then that indicates false positive reaction. Okay. Now moving forward, talking about the syphilis, syphilis is caused by the spirochete pyroperate treatment of palladium, treatment is penicillin G, primary syphilis is localized disease present with the painless anchor. I have told you about the painless anchor. So this is the painless anchor, there will be ulcer in the primary disease and what happened after development of this ulcer, you will even not, not notice about the disease. Okay. Then use fluorescence or dark field microscopy to visualize the treponoma in the fluid from the sanker, BDRL that is non-specific test, BDRL or RPR will be positive in 80 percent case. So what is seeing in the primary case? You are seeing the prime primary case, you have the just there is no symptoms except there will be the ulcer in your genitalia, so in your panel uh, soft and then that will be a painless. So you may be not noticed, if you have noticed then don't, it will not be due to the pain. If you are cleaning or you are using for other purposes, like you are having a contact, sexual contact with other, then you may notice or your partner will notice in that case. But you, since you will have no pain and it will disappear in few days, in most of the case, it goes unnoticed. That you have to understand. If you have noticed by chance, then you can do your test and then in that case, you can demonstrate the organism from this uh, ulcer. You can excuse, you can colors in this trial by wearing gloves and then collect the sample and then can use dark field microscopy or a fluorescence or even PCR to diagnose the organism itself and that is the 100 percent confirmatory. So you fluorescence or dark field microscope visualize treponema in the fluid from the sanker. This is a sanker, don't get uh, confused with the sancroid which is a painful full ulcer and that is due to hemophilus ducri. We will discuss later. This is talking about the syphilis, it is a painless ulcer. There will be BDRL positive that is non-specific test. Moving to the secondary syphilis, secondary syphilis will be now disseminated all over the body. It is a hematogenous spread. So secondary syphilis is disseminated disease with constitutional symptom, maculopapular rash including palm and so condomalata and the, this condomalata is called smooth painless wart like lesion on the genitalia, lymphadenopathy, patchy hair loss also confirmed with the dark field microscopy. Serological testing with BDR and RPR that is non-specific confirmed diagnosis with a specific take like FTABS or TPSA. Secondary syphilis is called to systemic, latent syphilis will can be a serology without symptoms may follow. Now let us go through the secondary syphilis. Secondary syphilis is actually disseminated disease all over your body, disseminated with the constitutional symptoms like maculopapular rash. You can see there is the maculopapular rash over here. So these are the maculopapular rash. We have discussed about this primary ulcer, this is an ulcer in your shaft of the penis or genitalia that is painless as you can demonstrate the organism, this is dark field microscopy of your spirochetes. Now moving to this uh, second syphilis where we are talking about the constitutional symptom. Now the disease has spread in all your body, in the whole, whole system and now you have developed the rash all over your body that is maculopapular rash including palm and sole. So there are only few diseases, you can see in the rash in the palm as well. So there are only few diseases where you can found rashes in palm and sole that you have to understand. So including this is the secondary syphilis. There is another formula actually, <coughs> C-A-R-S, CARS. This is Coxsackie A, Rickettsia and secondary syphilis. These are only the infection in which you will find infect rashes in your palm and sole. So there are only few diseases like Coxsackie A virus, then is Rickettsia and this secondary syphilis. So in there are very few diseases where you will found this rashes on the palm and sole. And if you are finding this is a very alarming feature, this is a very clear, very good important clue for you to increase the diagnosis. Okay, so that is important. So <clears throat> they have maculopapular rash including palm and sole. So you have seen them in the palm. Palm. They can also develop this condoma lata. This is another feature. So this is the you can see over here. So you can take it over this. Then we we can move on now. Uh, sorry. So we can move over this condomalata. This is the condomalata is a feature that is the smooth, painless, what like white lesion on the genitalia lymphadenopathy, patchy hair loss, also confirmed with the diagnosis. Let me talk about this condomalata. Condomalata is a smooth, painless, wart-like, white lesion on genitalia. So you are finding smooth, painless, wart-like, this is irregular, wart-like, 
structure that is found over here and this is painless ulcer that is called condoma lata. This is present of your secondary syphilis. This is the feature of your secondary syphilis that you have to understand. So, we are talking about the sec secondary syphilis and when we were we have discussed about this condoma lata, smooth painless what like lesion of the genitalia, there will be your lymph adenopathy, inguinal lymph node will be enlarged but they all are painless. There will be a patchy hair loss. There will, they can, or this can also be confirmed with Dalkin microscopy. We can even uh, demonstrate the organism if it is in the early stage of your secondary syphilis. Otherwise, you can go directly for doing the serological test where non specific tests like VDR and R RPR will be positive. If it is positive, then confirm with a specific test, tepanormal test that is FTA, ABS or TPHA or TPHI. So, that will be a confirmatory. Secondary syphilis is systemic syphilis. Coming to the after secondary syphilis, their patient can go into the asymptomatic stage. That is called latent syphilis. In latent syphilis, you do not have any symptoms, but you have the what? You have now serological test positive. So, if you have serological test positive, but no symptom, that is called latent syphilis. The latent syphilis can be divided into two phase, early phase and late phase. In early phase, you will have <coughs> serological positive. Early phase latent, latent syphilis is called as when a patient has less than one year of exposure. Suppose someone has sexual contact with the infected person or says high risk people within one year which is called as early latent syphilis. It can be also called late latent syphilis when a patient has exposure or unknown exposure. You do not know when he has got the syphilis or it is more than one year then we call it late syphilis late latent syphilis. So, syphilis can be divided as prim primary syphilis, secondary syphilis, latent syphilis in latent, early latent syphilis and late latent syphilis and then tertiary syphilis. This is the way we stage the, this disease. So, latent syphilis is a serological positive without symptoms may follow and in this you can have this, you do the screening test in which patient you will do this. There will be the high risk people, there will be a trans from one person to another person can be transmitted. Suppose mother is delivering a baby that can be transmitted. So, in that person you have to also do. So, every antenatal mother need to take test for this VDR or RPR test and if it is positive then confirm, they confirm with the specific test like FTA, ABS or TP, HI or TP, HA. Okay. Now, coming to the tertiary syphilis, tertiary syphilis is called gumma. This is chronic granulomas. You can see over the picture over here, this is the chronic granulomatous things that has been affecting your nose and mouth, this is gummas, it is called gummas. So, this is gummas, aortitis, there is inflammation of your aorta and there will be a neurosyphilis that is called tevis dorsalis general paresis and there will be argent robertson pupil constriction with, with the accommodation but it is not reactive to light. What is gumma? Gumma is the chronic inflammation where there will be a damage of your uh, also, all of the pictures again. So the gumma will be gumma will be your damage. This is chronic inflammation that will lead to a damage of your nose and septums. Aortitis. This will inflammation of aorta. There will be damage of your basa basurum of destruction of the aorta. There will be neurosyphilis, which is called the tebis, loss of the tebis dorsalis. If you remember, tebis dorsalis is a feature where there is an anterior column of your spinal cord that gets damaged. So there will be loss. That will there will be loss of your sensation okay and that leads to that leads to tevis dorsalis there is a term known as the argel robertson people where the pupil will be actually contract constrict with accommodation so when so you come here there will be a constriction but they will not react to the light this is called as the prostitute people now what does prostitute do they accommodate with you but they do not react they do not react with as your wife or you say your uh, girlfriends but they accommodate, they give you permission. So, the same things was uh, given name to the Argel Robertson people. This is the people that accommodate but do not, do not react to the light. So, in tertiary syphilis, there will be gummas, there will be the inflammation of aorta, there will be damage of your anterior column of the spinal cord, that is tebis dorsalis, and there will be Argel Robertson people, that is constriction with accommodation but not reactive to light. How can we diagnose? They can be diagnosed on the broad based ataxia. Rumbug sign positive, charcoal joints and stroke without hypertension. So, again we can remember, we, sorry, again we can remember with the formula like C A C A R S, where C4 charcoal joint, A4 ataxia, R4 Rumbug test and S4 stroke without hypertension. So, same formula which was remembering on the secondary syphilis that was again we can remember over here and apply where we have include that 
in a palm and sole, only few diseases can produce rash, that is the Coxsackie A, the Enrichexia and syphilis. Here also C4, charcoal joint, there will be the, this charcoal joint is due to sensory loss, there will change the bone and muscles, that is charcoal joint. A, broad bed ataxia, since there is sensory loss of the anterior dorsal column, so there will be ataxia. Rombok sign is, if you close your legs and then try to close your eyes, then you will, your, your gait will be not stable. This is Rombok sign positive. You know, in open eye, you will, you, the patient can maintain their posture, but when you say to close their legs and say to close your eyes, they cannot maintain that posture. That is Rombok sign positive and they develop stroke without hypertension. For neurosyphilis, test is spinal fluid. We have to test the CSF as well for BDRL, FTABS and PCR. So if you are suspecting of neurosyphilis, is a torsal case, the brain has been involved, not only, do not test only the serum, you have to test the spinal fluid as well. In a spinal fluid also, you can test for the BDRL, you can test for the trepanosome, test like FTABS or TPHI and you can do the PCR by which we can confirm our diagnosis. And even one, uh, one of the case we have diagnosed in our hospital with neurology, neurologist by thinking of there was there he, he, she was suffering for a long for 20 years not getting improved by all the medication then we thought of okay it may be a tertiary syphilis or neurosyphilis and we do this csf and we tested for vdrl tb ftabs and we found that positive for trypanosomal test that is positive for syphilis bacteria now let me go to the our point so We have gone through this. Now let me show you some of the picture. What is syphilis? Syphilis is actually a sexually transmitted disease that's been cured with antibiotics. Many people won't notice any symptom for years, so it's important to get tested. You can see the syphilis can be divided into the primary syphilis, three to four weeks of exposure, secondary syphilis, four to eight weeks after appearance of a primary sanker, latent, less than one year, early latent disease, late, more than one year, late latent disease. And then there is tertiary syphilis when one to ten years after infection. So primary syphilis, there is anchor. In the secondary syphilis, there is a rash, condomal lata, systemic symptoms. Latent, there will be no symptoms, only serology positive. And tertiary syphilis, there is the Gumas lesion, cardiovascular like aortitis, coronary arteritis, and CNS is very tabis dorsalis and the paris. You can see over here, this is the secondary syphilis where you can see the you can see our the primary syphilis where there will be the rat, there will be the ulcer, painless ulcer in your genitalia, and that you can demonstrate the organism from here itself. When it goes to the secondary syphilis, you can see there there will be the rats in your hand, this palm and sole, and there are only few diseases that can produce the rats in your hand, that is coxsackie, rickettsia, and secondary syphilis. So you have to do this thing. The bacteria, this from the genital, genital ulcer, primary syphilis, we can take and demonstrate the organism. This is the secondary syphilis where we can see rash and the tongue 